Hello all, welcome to GNB classes. In this class we are going to discuss about the In this class we are going to start with a new topic called congruence modulo. Congruence modulo is generally done in number theory. Congruence modulo it has a wide application of finding remainders when a when an integer is divided by another integer or finding out the last digit or last two digits of any natural number with a huge exponent. So this kind of problems can be easily solved by congruence modulo method. Though there are other methods that I will teach you in my coming classes, but right now in this class, I am going to focus on congruence modulo only. Okay. Now, first of all, we have to understand what is congruence modulo. If there are two integers, say a and b, this is the definition. If there are two integers a and b, and if m is a positive integer, and if m divides a minus b, if m divides a minus b, then we say that a is congruent to b modulo m. And the way we write is, a is congruent to b modulo m. This is the way of writing. See, from this notation, we can say two things. One is we can say that when a is congruent to b modulo m, we can say that a minus b is completely divisible by m. Or else we can say that when a is divided by m, the remainder is b. Tell me yes or no. Because we all know from the div basic divisibility rule that when m divides a minus b, then what we say? That a minus b is nothing but m into some integer, say t. t belongs to an integer which is also called quotient. So here a is what? Tell me what? It is m t plus b. Now what is b? b is nothing but the remainder. So that exactly what I have said, said here, that when A is congruent to B modulo M, it means that when A is divided by M, the remainder will be B. This is one way of saying, or else you can say that A minus B is completely divisible by M. Is it clear? Now let us discuss some properties of congruence modulo. Let me take A is congruent to B modulo M. And C is congruent to D modulo M. Is it clear? So what does this mean? This means that A minus B is completely divisible by M. Okay. So A can be written as what? M into say lambda 1 plus B. And this can be written as C equals to M say lambda 2 plus d. Is it clear? Where lambda 1 and lambda 2 both belongs to an integer. Okay. Now the first property which is called your addition rule. Addition rule. What does it state? It states that this two, I am considering these two cases. It states that a plus c is congruent to b plus d modulo m. Okay. This I will prove. A is m lambda 1 plus b and c is m lambda 2 plus d. Now, if I add the corresponding sides, we are going to have. Okay. Now, lambda 1 and lambda 2 both are integers. Therefore, lambda 1 plus lambda 2 itself is an integer. So, we can say that a plus c minus b plus d is completely divisible by m or m divides a plus c minus b plus d. Hence, we can say a plus c is congruent to b plus d modulo m. Is it clear? So, this is what is called your addition property. Now, let us come for the subtraction property. What is subtraction property? Same thing. It states that a minus c will be b minus d modulo m. Okay, this we can easily prove. Again, you subtract the second equation from the first one. So, we are having a minus c is basically m lambda 1 minus lambda 2 plus b minus d. 
okay so lambda 1 minus lambda 2 itself is an integer because lambda 1 lambda 2 individually they are integers so their subtraction will be an integer hence from this one we can say that a minus c is congruent to b minus d modular m according to the definition is it clear now let us come for property number 3 multiplication multiplication property states that for this two for this two ac is congruent to bd modulo m again we will prove this ac means very simple proof simply multiply this two to get the answer so if i multiply it will give you m square lambda 1 lambda 2 plus bm lambda 2 plus m d lambda 1 plus b d okay so now if i take m common from this so we are having m lambda 1 lambda 2 plus b lambda 2 plus d lambda 1 plus b d okay now here all are integers therefore this whole is an integer so it is m into some integer plus b d okay which is equals to AC. So from here we can say that AC is congruent to BD modulo M. Is it clear? This is your multiplication rule. Now the fourth property is the power property. What is that? It states that if A is congruent to B modulo M, then if K belongs to any integer, then a to the power k is congruent to b to the power k modulo m. Okay, let me prove this. Simple proof. We have a is congruent to b modulo m. It means that a is nothing but m times lambda plus b according to the definition where lambda belongs to some integer z. Okay. Now, if I raise its power to k, so in the left hand side also we have to raise the power to k. Now, if I expand this binomially, we are going to have so it will go like that and it will be and the last term will be b to the power k. Is it clear? Now you observe from this till this term all contains m. Now if I take m common, so we are left with some integer because here lambda, m, kc1, kc2 all are integers. So if I take k common, I am sorry, m common, we are left with some integer plus b to the power k. So a to the power k minus b to the power k is equals to m into some integer so according to the definition m divides a to the power k minus b to the power k so from here we can say that a to the power k is congruent to b to the power k modulo m is it clear so this is what is called your power property or power rule now the fifth property a is always congruent to a modulo m am i correct or not a is always congruent to a modulo m because m always divides a minus a yes yes or no therefore we will say that a is always congruent to a modulo m this is a very important property therefore can we say that the congruence is reflexive on set of integers congruence is reflexive in the set of integers okay now those who have not done relation they will not understand what is reflexivity of a relation but those who have done they can understand what is reflexivity those who have not done uh, I will definitely make a separate video for relation. So there you will understand what is reflexivity of any relation. Because this is not the right place to explain reflexivity. Okay. So A is congruent to A modulo M. It implies that congruence is reflexive on the set of integers 
Z. Okay. Now the sixth property. It states that if A is congruent to B modulo M, then that implies B is also congruent to A modulo M. This is what is called your symmetric property of any relation. Okay, let me prove this. Proof is very simple. As A is congruent to B modulo M, so we say that M divides A minus B. So from there you can say that M divides B minus A also if I take a minus common. So that implies A divides B minus A implies B is congruent to A modulo M. Okay, therefore we have proved that congruence is symmetric on a set of integers z. Okay, now the seventh property. If A is congruent to B modulo M, B is congruent to C modulo M, then that implies A is congruent to C modulo M. Okay, let me first prove this. Since A is congruent to B modulo M, hence we can say that A equals to M lambda plus B. Okay, similarly, B is congruent to C modulo M means B can be written as MK plus C, where lambda and K belongs to some integer. So, from this equation, we are getting a minus b is m lambda and from this one we are getting from the second equation we are getting b minus c is m k. Now if I subtract the second equation from the first one then we are going to have a minus c is m times lambda minus k. Again lambda minus k is an integer. So we are having a minus c is nothing but m into integer that implies m divides a minus c. So from here we can say that a is congruent to c modulo m. Okay, this relation is what called your transitivity. So I will say that congruence is transitive on the set of integer z. Okay, so what we have proved actually here is basically congruence is reflexive, symmetric as well as transitive on a set of integers z. So we will say that congruence is an equivalence relation. Equivalence relation on the set of integers z. Is it clear? Absolutely. Now, before we proceed further, I want you to understand two basic facts. That is, when A is congruent to B modulo M, it means that B is the remainder when A is divided by M. Now, we all know that the remainder always lies between 0 and the divisor. In this case, it is M. Now, if this remainder exceeds the value of m in certain calculation, then we will bring that remainder in this range by subtracting multiples of m from the remainder. What I want to say is basically, suppose we are having 7 is congruent to 3 modulo 4, right? It means what? When 7 is divided by 4, the remainder is 3. Now, we all know the property that a to the power k, if a is congruent to b modulo m, then a to the power k is congruent to b to the power k modulo m. Okay, this property just now we have learned. Now, in this case, if I raise the power, here k belongs to an integer. Now, if I raise the power, let us say 2. So, 7 square is basically 3 square mod 4. Now, 3 square is what? 3 square is basically 9 mod 4. Now, 9 is the remainder. Now, when you are dividing 7 square by 4, the remainder cannot be 9. 
So what we have to do, we have to bring this 9 within the range 0 and the divisor, in this case it is 4. So we have to bring this remainder within the range 0 to 4. Yes or no? So what to do? You have to subtract multiples of 4 from 9 to get that result within this range because it's a remainder. So what we will do, we will basically subtract 8 from 9 to get the remainder as 1. That is when 7 squared is divided by 4, that is 49 when divided by 4, the remainder comes to 1. Is it clear? Is this absolutely clear? Okay. Next I want to discuss and you should know what is called negative remainder. Now, practically, negative remainder does not exist. Remainder cannot be negative, but we will use negative remainder as a tool because using negative remainder, computation can be speeded up considerably. Okay? Let us say when 6 is divided by 4, the remainder is 2. Okay? So 6 is basically what? So 6 is congruent to 2 modulo 4. Observe one thing, when 6 is divided by 4, we are having a remainder, right? But the number which is, which is right above 6 and multiple of 4 is 8. That is what I want to say is, if 8 is divided by 4, then there will be no remainder. Is it clear? So if we want to do that, we are too short from 8 because here it is 6 and the next integer which is multiple of 4 is 8 so we are too short so what we will write we can write this thing in this way also 6 and minus 2 is congruent modulo 4 is it clear 6 and minus 2 are the congruent modulo 4 this also we can write now you can ask me said then uh, why this negative remainder is coming now if you actually want to find out the remainder all we will do is we will simply add the divisor over here so if I add the divisor what we are going to have I have added 4 so we are getting 2 mod 4 which is the actual remainder are you getting my point though we are taking this as negative remainder which has no practical significance but it will actually speed up the computation of the problem so that is why we are taking minus 2 and if you want to get the actual remainder all we do is we simply add the divisor with that negative remainder and we get the actual remainder for that one is it clear or not let me take another example suppose if 7 is divided by say 3 if 7 is divided by 3, the remainder is 1. So, how we write 7 is congruent to 3, I'm sorry, congruent to 1 modulo 3. Is it clear? Now, you can write in this way or else we can write, we will think which number just above 7, which is a multiple of 3 and that is 9. So, again, we are too short, only too short from this 9. Right? So, we can write in this way also. Since we are too short, we can write 7 is congruent to minus 2 modulo 3. Is it clear? Now, if you want to get the actual remainder, which is actually 1, all we will do is we will simply add the divisor. So, it will be 7 and 1 is congruent modulo 3. As simple as that. Is it clear? So, have you understood what is negative remainder? Okay. And we have learned from here that if the remainder exceeds the divisor, then we will subtract multiple of the divisor to take it down within the range of 0 and the divisor. 0 included and the divisor is open. Have you understood it clearly? Okay. Another very important part to be remembered here is that if A is congruent to B modulo M, then always remember the remainder that you get by dividing A by M, the remainder that we get by dividing A by M is same as the remainder that we get 
if I divide B by M, remember this thing, it's a very important property. What I want to say is, suppose 7 is congruent to 3 modulo 4. So, what is the remainder when 7 is divided by 4? It is 3. And what is the remainder when 3 is divided by 4? It is again 3. So, whenever A is congruent to B modulo M, always remember that the remainder that we get by dividing A by M is same as the remainder that we get by dividing B by M. Now, let us quickly go through two more properties, then we will shift for uh, solving problems using congruence modulo. The property is that if A is congruent to B modulo M, and if T belongs to any integer, then we can multiply T on both sides, that is AT is congruent to BT modulo M, this is true. Let me just prove this thing, this is a pretty simple proof, let us do it very fast. Since A is congruent to B modulo M, therefore I can write that A is nothing but M lambda plus B, where lambda belongs to any integer. Okay, so let me just multiply both sides with t. So we are having a t equals to m t lambda plus b t. So that can be also represented like a t equals to t lambda m plus b t. Okay, so a t minus b t will be some integer into m because lambda is an integer, t is an integer. So this whole thing is an integer. So, it will be some integer into m. So, that implies that m divides a t minus b t. So, that implies what? We can write that a t is congruent to b t modulo m. So, that is accepted. Okay. Now, the last property that we will be talking about is called cancellation property. Proving the cancellation law is beyond the scope of this class. So, I will be discussing its proof part when I will make a separate video on number theory. So, for a time being, you simply remember this thing as a formula. Is it clear? The cancellation property states that if it is congruent to BT modulo M, then you cannot cancel T on both sides directly. From here, you cannot write A is congruent to B modulo M. Okay, there are certain conditions that we will discuss, but straight away you cannot write this. Okay, that is the reverse process of this. There is a restriction. You cannot do it directly. So, the theorem states that if AT is congruent to BT modulo M, then you can write this thing as A is congruent to B modulo D, where D is basically M divided by GCD of T and M. Are you getting my point? This you have to remember as a formula. That is what I want to say is, whenever you are dividing by a common term, then the divisor is also divided by GCD of or HCF of the common term which you are cancelling both sides and the divisor. Okay, M is always divided by the GCD of T and M. Let us take an example. Say 15 is congruent to 3 modulo 6. That is when 15 is divided by 6, the remainder is 3. Now, if you cancel, normally if I cancel with 3, so we will have 5 is congruent to 1 modulo 6, which is not true. Which is not true because we know that congruence always holds the reflexivity property. That is 5 should be congruent to 5 modulo 6, not 1 modulo 6. Why this thing happened? Because you are cancelling with 3. So, what is GCD of 3 and 6? GCD of 3 and 6 is 3. Yes, GCD of 3 and 6 is 3. Therefore, this relation will satisfy only when, when 15 
is congruent to 3 modulo 6 and you are dividing with 3 and we know that the GCD of 3 and 6 is 3. So this 3 has to be divided by 6 also. I mean 6 should be divided by 3 also. Then only that relation will hold true. Let us check. If I divide by 3, so it will be 5 is congruent to 1 modulo it is what d d means m divided by gcd of t and m gcd of t and m in this case is 3 and m in this case is 6 so it will be 2 and you see this relation holds true 5 is congruent to 1 modulo 2 this is true is it clear absolutely now let us take another example say if it is 33 is congruent to 3 Modulo 5. Tell me yes or no. When 33 is divided by 5, the remainder is 3. Now, in this case, if I cancel, it will satisfy. I'm telling you why. If I cancel 3, we are going to have 11 is congruent to 1 modulo 5, and which is true. Why it is so? Because when you are cancelling by 3, GCD of 3 and 5 is what? 1. GCD of 3 and 5 is? 1. So, in this case, this m will be divided by 1. That is, it remains m. That is why, in this case, this 5 is unchanged and the relation holds true. Are you getting my point? So, from here, we can find out a corollary. What is the corollary? The corollary is that when GCD of t and m is 1, then there is no problem of cancelling t from both sides. When GCD of two numbers is one, when they are co-prime to each other. That is what I want to say is, the term with which you are cancelling and the divisor, if they are co-prime to each other, then this relation holds true directly, you can write. Why? Because now you can understand the logic. Since GCD of t and m, in that case, when t and m are co-prime to each other, GCD will be one. So, your D, which is nothing but your M, that is the divisor, remains the same. Is it clear? So, in that case, only we can cancel. Absolutely clear? Now, let us shift for some problems based on congruence modulo. But in this class, we will only find out the remainder problem. And in the next video, I will go for finding out the last digit and the last two digits and all those applications of congruence modulo. Is it okay? Now, let us shift for solving problems. What is the remainder when 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 plus 5 to the power 100 is divided by 7? So, first what we will do, we will first find out what is the remainder when 2 to the power 100 is divided by 7? Then we will find out what is the remainder when 3 to the power 100 is divided by 7? As well as we will find out what is the remainder when 5 to the power 100 is divided by 7. First, this is our first step of doing the sum. First thing first, let us just first find out what is the remainder when 2 to the power 100 is divided by 7. Now, we will always start with the reflexivity property of congruence modulo. That is, 2 is congruent to 2 modulo 7. This is the reflexive property of congruence modulo. Now, always remember our main goal, our main goal is to bring this remainder as 1. Why I am telling you so? Because if somehow whether if you can bring this remainder as 1, then it will be helpful for us in that sense. Because we know one property that a to the power k is congruent to b to the power k modulo m. That is, if we raise the power and if the remainder is 1, then there will be no calculation at all. In that case, there is no need to calculate b to the power k because it will be always 1 if the power is raised to anything. Is it clear? So, that is the goal. We always try to bring 1 over here. Okay, so for that, what I'm doing here is I'm raising the power to 3. So it is 2 cube mod 7. 2 cube is what? 2 cube is basically 8 modulo 7. But when you are dividing something by 7, the remainder cannot be 8. So we are subtracting 7 out of it. So we are getting 1 modulo 7. Is this much clear or not? Now, the moment you get the remainder as 1, now you see, 
we have to reach 2 to the power 100 we have two cube so now if i raise the power to 33 doesn't matter the power of one will also be raised to 33 because this is the property that will be modulo 7 that is 2 to the power 99 is nothing but 1 modulo 7 tell me yes or no that is when 2 to the power 99 is divided by 7 the remainder is 1 now we haven't reached 2 to the power 100 so for that what i am doing i am multiplying 2 in both sides can i do that because as we all know that when a and b are congruence modulo m then we can write at is same as your bt modulo m okay when t belongs to an integer so that exactly what i have done so in the left hand side we are getting 2 to the power 100 which is nothing but 2 modulo 7 what does it mean it means that when 2 to the power 100 is divided by 7 the remainder is 2 is it clear now let us quickly shift for finding the remainder when 3 to the power 100 is divided by 7 again we will start from the reflexive property of congruence modulo that is 3 is congruent to 3 modulo 7 now prime motto is to bring 1 over here so what to do let me just raise its power to square so it will be 9 modulo 7 because 3 square is 9 but again 9 cannot be the remainder when some integer is divided by 7 so take out 7 out of it so we will be left with 2 modulo 7 again i am telling you repeatedly i am mentioning my main goal is to bring 1 over here so what i will do now i will now raise the power to 3 so it will become 2 cube modulo 7 so this gives us 3 to the power 6 is 8 modulo 7 again 8 cannot be the remainder when some integer is divided by 7 so take out 7 from there so we are left with 3 to the power 6 is 1 modulo 7 tell me yes or no now the moment you get 1 now you have to find out we have to reach to 3 to the power 100 how to reach 3 to the power 100 what power should raise to 3 to the power 6 so that it come closure to 3 to the power 100 and in that case in this case what we will do we will raise the power to 16 so right hand side we don't have any problem because 1 to the power 16 will give you 1 and that is why we are always trying to bring 1 over here 1 as a remainder now we got 3 to the power 96 is 1 modulo 7 now we want to reach 3 to the power 100 so what i'm doing here is i'm simply multiplying both sides with 3 square i'm sorry 3 to the power 4 so it will be 3 to the power 4 modulo 7 so that gives you 3 to the power 100 which is 3 to the power 4 3 to the power 4 is 81 now 81 cannot be the remainder when some integer is divided by 7 so take out the multiple of 7 from 81 so we can take out 77 that is 11 times 7 gives you 77 so if i take out 77 we are left with 4 modulo 7 is it clear so what we got now when 3 to the power 100 is divided by 7 the remainder is 4 is this much clear to you okay now let us come for the last part which is nothing but 5 to the power 100 when divided by 7 so let me do it here again we will start with the reflexive property of congruence modulo that is 5 is congruent to 5 modulo 7 again my main motto is to bring 1 over here so what i'm doing is i'm raising its power to 2 so it becomes what now i'm doing little fast huh? it will be 5 square that is 25 25 cannot be the remainder so take out multiple of 7 which is 21 so we will be left with 4 modulo 7 is this much clear now let us raise its power again to 2 so it will be 16 modulo 7 16 modulo 7 take out 14 out of that so it will be 2 modulo 7 is it clear again i'm telling you why i'm doing so i want to bring one over here one i want the remainder should be one 
So now what I'm doing is I'm raising its power to 3. So now the right hand side will become 2 cube that is 8, 8 modulo 7, take out 7, so it will be 1 modulo 7. Is it clear? So now we are having 5 to the power 12 is 1 modulo 7. Is it clear? Now we want to reach to 5 to the power 100. So what I am doing is I am raising its power to 8. So it will be 1 to the power 8 modulo 7. So that gives you 5 to the power 96. Again 1 modulo 7. Is it clear? We have to reach to 5 to the power 100. We have 5 to the power 4 and 2 is congruent modulo 7. So let me uh, multiply the corresponding sides of these two equations. We know it's a property. If A and B are congruence modulo M, C and D are congruence modulo M, then we can write AC is congruent to BD modulo M. It's a property. So, if we multiply this to the corresponding sides, in the left hand side we are getting 5 to the power 100 and in the right hand side we are getting 2 into 1 that is 2 modulo 7. Is it clear? So, when 5 to the power 100 is divided by 7, the remainder is 2. Now, we have to find out what is the remainder when 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 plus 5 to the power 100 is divided by 7. Now, let me just write it here. What are the results that we got? Now, if I add the corresponding sides, 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 plus 5 to the power 100 is congruent to 2 plus 4 plus 2 modulo 7. So, 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 plus 5 to the power 100 is congruent to 8 modulo 7. Yes or no? But 8 cannot be the remainder when something is divided by 7. So, take out 7. So, it is 1 modulo 7. Therefore, when this expression, that is 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 plus 5 to the power 100 is divided by 7, the remainder is 1. Let us take another example. Find out what is the remainder when 41 to the power 65 is divided by 7. Now, just observe that when 41 is divided by 7, the nearest multiple above 41 of 7 is 42. That is, when 42 is divided by 7, there is no remainder. But we are one short of it. So, we can write that 41 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 7. Tell me yes or no. Because as I told you, my prime motto is to bring 1 over here. Whether it is 1 or minus 1 doesn't matter. Because if it is 1 or minus 1, we can raise its power and there will be no calculation involved in it. Okay. So, 41 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 7. Now, if I raise, because we have to reach the exponent to 65. So, what I am doing here is, I am simply raising the power of 41 to 65 directly. So, what we are going to have? Minus 1 to the power 65 modulo 7. Minus 1 to the power 65 is nothing but minus 1 modulo 7. Now, as I told you before, that Negative remainder has no practical significance. So, if I want to get the actual remainder, what we do, we simply add the divisor to that negative remainder. So, in this case, if I add the divisor, which is 7 over here, is nothing but 6 modulo 7, because 7 minus 1, that gives you 6. So, from here we can say that when 41 to the power 65 is divided by 7, the remainder is 6. Tell me yes or no. What is the remainder when 2 to the power 99 is divided by 33? In this case, if we observe, we will find that 2 to the power 5 when divided by 3. 2 to the power 5 means what? It is 32. When divided by 33, the remainder is 32. But if we go in terms of negative remainder, then we will think that which number more than 32 is a multiple of 33. 
which is nothing but 33 itself. So we are actually one shot of that dividend which is completely divided by the divisor. So can we write that when 2 to the power 5 is divided by 33, then the remainder is minus 1? Because if 32 is divided by 33, actually the remainder is 32. Now, if you want to get that 32 back, simply add 33 with minus 1, you are going to get 32. But as I told you, my prime motto is to bring 1 or minus 1 over here. So that is why we have simply manipulated this. Is it clear? Now, the moment we get minus 1, now I can raise its power to anything. We have to raise its power in such a way that we will be closer to 2 to the power 99. So, we are raising its power to 19. So, this one will give you minus 1 to the power 19 modulo 33. That is 2 to the power 95 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 33. Tell me yes or no. Okay, but we have to reach to 2 to the power 99. So, what I am doing here is, I am simply multiplying 2 to the power 4 in both sides. So, we are having minus 1 into 2 to the power 4 modulo 33. So, in the right hand side, in the left hand side, we are getting 2 to the power 99, which is congruent modulo to minus 16 modulo 33. If I want to get, because negative remainder I don't want, so I want the positive remainder. So what I will do, I will simply add the divisor to it. So 33 minus 16, that will give you, gives us 17. Therefore, 2 to the power 99, when divided by 33, the remainder is 17. So this is the power of taking negative remainder. Okay. If you like my class, do hit the like button and subscribe. Click the bell icon to get notified about my new uploaded videos. Put your queries and doubts in the comment section. You can now reach out to me at my mail, my Facebook page, my Instagram. You can also join my WhatsApp group for doubt clearing. Link given in the description. See you in my next video. Till then, goodbye and take care.